Hey guys, Dark with Cyclone FPV, and we're getting ready to do another build here. And this is going to be on the Alpha RC, the Micro 160 or the ARC 160 that we have on our website. Uh, here's it's a unibody frame, so let me go ahead and do a uh, picture in picture right here and show you guys what we're working with. So these are the contents of the frame right here. Uh, I know our website has not had a picture of this one because I had not built it yet um, for that, but I'm going to go ahead and do it right now, and we're going to take our measurements and see what we got. Okay. So let's get our calipers ready, and it is a unibody construction and not a modular construction, and of course that means that. Uh, it's all one piece on the bottom, so if you break one piece, you have to replace the whole bottom piece. On the flip side, though, I'm a big fan of the unibody construction. I find that they fly better and they're stronger, but again, that's just each his own. So let's take a measurement here. The measurement is going to be a little over uh, three millimeters in thickness for the base. And for the top plate, we are talking about a measurement of about uh, one and a half millimeters, okay? Uh, outside of that, here is the uh, here are the parts that come with it. Let me go ahead and cut this open. All right, let me show you what we're going to be dealing with here, and we'll go ahead and set all this aside. Okay, so first thing is we've got our standoffs, we've got our camera mounts, we've got our, our pad for our LiPo, and we've got some uh, screws, right? So let's go ahead and open the screws up. We'll put those over here on this side. All right, so there's that. And let's see what we're working with. Okay. So, uh, based on this, we know the frame is going to sit like this right here, and we know that these pieces... Now, it, this is kind of up in the air. I've seen it mounted a couple different ways, but I'm going to go ahead and go this route. All right. Sorry about the beeping, guys. It just means somebody's in the driveway. And I believe they do give you the option to bring it in, but I'm not sure. So, we'll just try it like this, and we'll go ahead and get these things started. It's a very quick, very easy build. So, let's go ahead actually a pretty neat little build very simple uh, it's pretty tall uh, if you want to get different standoffs you could lower the build um, it doesn't have to be this tall they give you uh, let's see what are these 30 35s uh, they give you 30 millimeter standoffs but like I said you could even go as low as uh, if you went look with an all-in-one or something small you could probably go with like a 20 millimeter which would probably look pretty cool and I may build one uh, like that just to show you guys um, let me see what here is they've given us some screws actually so we do have some longer screws for the bottom parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and use those um, instead. So let me use that for the bottom because the bottom plate is thicker. So I think what I'll do is, let me see what I used up here because there are two sets. If you can look right here, you'll see that there are longer screws and shorter screws. And I think I used the shorter one over here, but let me check real quick. Yeah, I did. So let me take those out. You should use the longer screws on the bottom. I wasn't paying attention to that. So let's do that real quick. And we got one more in the back. Okay. Let's see how this is going to fit. Sorry, I'm going to go like this actually. It looks like it fits really well. Okay. Now they do give the option to put your, uh, I guess you can move the standoff to the side if you want to leave the back open. So feel free to do that if you'd like. Um, so the way it looks to me is here's your 30 30 right here. And if you were going to use a 2020 stack and you want it and you had these open, you could actually, these holes go straight to, to the top right here. So you could move your stack. Um, you could move, sorry, your standoffs here. If you wanted to open up the back area for whatever you may be using it for. Okay. So, uh, that does leave you open. This does support both 30, 30 and 2020 stacks. Uh, and it seems to have a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty open design, uh, for the most part. Uh, so let's go ahead and put these in here. And that is for a super wide camera. Hold on one second. Let me see. I've got, I have an app on this belt right here. Let me see. This would be like a full size, I guess. Uh, yep. That would hold sort of like a full size camera right there. So that's pretty neat. Um, but then you could also bring it back in. Now, uh, I don't think, let me see how they would do this. I'm not really sure that, uh, you would have to come up with something else because I don't see a spot here to, um, to mount a, a closer. Uh, mount for this, but you probably could use one from your own camera uh, One of your camera mounts like the Fox here has with their shell on the outside or their bracket on the outside So that shouldn't be a problem um, Okay, so the only thing now is I'm not able to get this to go in here properly at least 
let me let me work on this a little bit it does seem like it's a real tight fit so just be careful when you do this because sometimes the carbon fiber on these on these smaller cuts uh you can tell that they are um uh, I think it's called defra deflex deflection, diffraction. I can't remember the term, but it's basically when we're cutting with carbon fiber on a, on a small bit, right? And you're cutting and, you're, and your bit is supposed to be going straight down, but because it's thin, it flexes. And so the cut actually looks straight, but as it gets into the layers, it's, uh, it's angled, right? So sometimes it doesn't give you the straightest cut and, and allow for the parts to go through. So let me just see here um, if there's, it does seem to be a little difficult to get this part in. And I want to be careful not to splinter this out. So please, by all means, just take your time and be careful with it. Um, I, sometimes these companies that make these small cuts, it does get a little difficult here. So once you get that in there, just kind of wiggle it a little bit. Uh, usually on the bigger, on the bottom pieces, it goes in much easier because it's a, it's a thicker piece of carbon fiber. And so it cuts slower and uh, smaller pieces can be a little bit tricky. So let me see if I can get this in. And then what I'll usually do is if I can get it to just kind of hold, I don't necessarily like having to do this, and I'll be very honest with you, it bothers me. Um, I like the frame, but the company, I think, needs to spend a little more time on their cut. Uh, but then again, what, what I would do normally is, okay, once I've got it in there and I can tell, I'm gonna go ahead and just screw this down now and try to hold it in place and hopefully see that pressure from screwing it down push that carbon fiber through. All right, so there's one. Let's do the next one here. And you can see where it's kind of up there a little bit. So you just want to be careful. Um, and then it will wiggle itself through after a little bit of wear and tear. All right, so don't worry about it, but don't force it too hard with your finger because you can splinter that carbon fiber and you don't want, I still have a piece in here from, uh, I don't know, from like maybe a month ago. I just haven't gotten around to taking it out yet. Um, and then what I'll usually do, and this, and it does, it is disappointing when I see something like this happened. Um, but again, you know, these are fairly inexpensive frames. So, uh, you know, sometimes that whole uh, making it somewhat affordable. I don't know where my, oh, you know, give me one second. I'm gonna grab this real quick. So for me, sorry, I needed my mallet. I was using it to put some gates up this weekend. So for me, what I'll usually do is if I see it, I'll turn it on the side that's fine and I'll just kind of lightly tap it in there. And then at that point, I can see that I've got my stuff. It's gone in all the way. Everything's fine. There's no splintering. It's, it's usually on the manufacturer. They need to pay more attention to this. And, and uh, uh, Alpha RC is no, uh, no exception to this rule. Um, but again, they make their frames affordable. And part of it is when you get to these real small cuts, uh, I'm going to clean my table off here. When you get to these real small cuts and inserts, sometimes the companies just, um, you know, uh, they make it so precise with the cut and forget that their carbon fiber has a 5% uh, most likely um, uh, range of error, right? Because you layer carbon fiber, real thin sheets, right? And then, and then it comes together and you have your resin and everything and then, and then uh, it's uh, sealed, vacuum sealed, right? And then it's cured. And so if your layers are off just a little bit, I mean, we're talking about a tenth of a millimeter, um, then you have a, this, this range of, of, of fault tolerance, okay? So as an example, let me, let me give you an example here um, just to kind of make sense of this. So if I zero out my calipers, sorry, I turned them off by accident. If I zero them out right here, right, and I measure this. Now my calipers are pretty, pretty accurate. These uh, Minitoyo uh, calipers are some of the best ones. I love them. So I've got minor reading 1.42 millimeters right here, okay? My guess is that this is supposed to be a 1.5 millimeter piece, but because of the uh, area of the uh, range there of the layers, you're gonna flex a little bit. So here you're gonna have uh, exactly three millimeters. So this one's done very well. And then on the camera piece, if this did not come from the same part, now I can't see, I won't be able to get in there, I guess. Um, shoot. Let me see if I can just grab a random one here, a random piece of carbon fiber. This is another one made by this company. You'll see another video on this one soon. So on this piece, right, this is supposed to, this is two and a half and there two and a half is, is let me see if I can get, it's 2.55 um, and their top piece, which would be one and a half is about 1.4. So what you can tell is that depending on the parts or depending on the carbon fiber and when it was made and how it was made, you take another piece like this one right here, 
And this again would normally be, oops, that's not supposed to be on there. Let me find a spot like this. Okay, so this is a very good cut at 1.5, it should be. And you can tell that it's going to, I mean, I could squeeze it hard, but I'm gonna be comfortable saying it's very close to 1.5. However, uh, another piece that should be 1.5 uh, is going to, well, actually it's not bad either. Um, it's, it's at 1.52, so some of these are pretty accurate, and then some of them will vary a little bit. I hate to say it like that, um, but uh, okay, anyway, so that's it. So what you see is when you have little things like that, it's usually because the carbon fiber here is a little thicker than they intended, uh, and because of that, it's going to have a hard time fitting. So just take your mallet or something, and, and, and do not hit to try to press it in. Turn it upside down and hit the solid piece and try to make that push it down. That usually will work, but there is your um, Alpha RC uh, 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 ARC 160 that you see on our website. It's also called the Micro 160, uh, but on our website, sorry, my phone won't stop. Uh, you'll see it as uh, the ARC 160, okay? And also, I'll put some pictures now of this on our website. That's pretty much it. Oh, I need to give you the weight on it. Hold on a second. Let me put the weight on here. Let's see where we're at. Oh, and I didn't put this either. So let me put the, let me put this on real quick. Okay. And let's lay this one. It's going to go right on the bottom. Sorry, I meant to do that already, and I didn't. So that's my fault. It's going to go right here, just like that. Okay, and that's going to be your pad for your battery. And now let's take a, a weight of this and see where we're at. Let's make sure that it's calibrated. So that's a 20 gram. Good. This is a, holy cow, can I read this? Um, I guess we'll guess it in a second. Maybe a five gram? Yep, five gram. There it is. Okay, there's that. Uh, and then, there we go. So our weight of our uh, frame is about 48 grams, okay? All right, guys. Oh, you guys can't see that. Gosh darn it. Sorry, I apologize. Here, uh, let me do this again. Uh, my bad. All right, so, uh, the frame, sorry. And I meant to, I already calibrated there, but there you can see. 47, 48 grams, okay? So, uh, sorry about that. I forgot to change the camera angle. So there you go, guys. That's it right there. Uh, that's it for this video. Listen, uh, six days till Christmas. Have a great Christmas to your family, guys. God bless. Uh, be safe. Spend time with your family. Put the drones down for a little bit and go enjoy your uh, wife and kids or husband and kids or kids or whatever, okay? Other than that, guys, uh, make sure to hit me up at Tark at Cyclone FPV if you have any questions. Uh, also, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. I like these little buttons. Uh, and uh, if not, we'll see you soon. Take care. God bless. Bye.